All right, this has been a request, so I'm going to kind of take a little deviation from the universal forwarders to kind of give a little more detail here. I have been asked, how do I get syslog into Splunk? And they'll often, I can't get my universal forwarder to send syslog. First off, let's just explain something. Syslog is not what Splunk sends. Splunk can consume syslog, but it will not create syslog. Splunk universal forwarders, as a general rule, they're going to read files, read scripts, create logs, and forward them off uh, to port 9997 on a proprietary Splunk, I don't even want to call it proprietary because it's open source, but Splunk it uses their own method to send logs from a remote server into Splunk. It is not syslog. Syslog is a specific uh, thing on other applications to send logs off. And so, for example, I've got a PFSense box here. This PFSense box, I can configure my PFSense to send its logs to Splunk via syslog. Or, I'll show you the alternate, at the end of the video, I can configure a universal forward or put it on my PFSense box and have PFSense directly read the logs and send them over, and that will not be done via syslog. It'll be done via Splunk through port 9997. Anyway, so let's show that in detail. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to hit status. I'm going to go to system logs. That's where my logs are, and I can go to settings. And down here, I've already turned it on. I have send log messages to remote syslog server. And then I can send down here, I choose the remote log server. There's my 192.168.1.119. That is my indexer. So I'm sending it there. Normally, if you read down here, it says syslog sends UDP datagram support 514. Uh, syslog is typically TCP or UDP on port 514. You can change the port, but that's the typical port for uh, syslog. I have a problem, I changed it to 5514. And the reason being is Splunk doesn't like to open up port 514 unless it's running as root. As best practice, you don't want to run Splunk Enterprise as root. So my indexer is not running as root, thereby it is very difficult for me to open up port 514. Splunk will throw errors and say, no, 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 you got to change all these configs. I don't want to deal with that. So I'm just going to put a 5 on top of it. Now I'm going to use a high port. Any of your high ports above 1024, I, the exact number doesn't really matter. Any high port, you, you do not need to have uh, root running on your enterprise instance to ingest on that port. But a low port, you're going to have to have root running in it as, or do some configs to change things. So I just put in that I'm going to send it on port 5514. Now I have the option to send what logs do I want to send. And this is really important. I like the way PFSense laid this out. I can send each one of these logs or I can click the everything. The key, and I'm going to come back to this, it's going to send every syslog, every log via syslog combined together. And so when it arrives at Splunk, I'm not I'm going to have to actually pull those things apart. All the system events and everything are all going to be clumped together in the same index under the same source type, and that's a big pain. Another reason I personally do not like using syslog. If I can avoid I don't have a problem with syslog. Syslog's great, but I tend to use a un, I will tend to have a syslog server. I will write the logs that all these machines, they'll syslog to one central server, and it will just then record those logs in. I will have a, a file folder for system events, a file folder for firewall events, and then I'll set up my universal forwarder to monitor each one of these files individually so I can assign them their own unique source type. This may not make sense yet. I'm giving you a precursor. When we jump over to the uh, uh, indexer, you'll hopefully that'll come, become more clear. By the way, I'm going to send all my logs over right now using syslog. All right, so then we want to jump over to my Splunk instance, and I need to go check UFW status. You're going to have to use whatever is your firewall agent on your machine to check your firewalls. I need to make sure that 5514 is open. I also have 514 open as well, um, but I need to make sure 5514 is open. If not, I would need to do a UFW allow 5514 and open it up. 
if you don't open it up on the OS, it could get blocked and thereby you won't get the logs. And that'll be frustrating because you'll be like, why am I not getting my sys logs? I sent them, they're not showing up. It's because the port's not open. Uh, anyway, so now I've got the port open. I've got this thing set, I would hit save. It will tell me, okay, I'm gonna start sending syslog over. Another problem is it's sending at UDP. If you're familiar with UDP, um, if a log gets dropped, it's gone. There is no, uh, there is no retention. Um, I'm not a big fan of UDP syslog. Uh, if you have any sort of network degradation uh, issue, you're gonna lose logs. Uh, syslog TCP, much better, you won't lose the logs. Splunk sends everything TCP when it does it naturally, the 9997, that Splunk universal forwarder. So it also makes sure that logs aren't lost. All right, let's jump over to my Splunk instance. We're over here. Best thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to data inputs. So settings, data inputs, and I'll just wait for the screen to load. And then we have TCP and UDP. Listen on to UDP for incoming data. It even says the example is syslog. Well, we were told by PFSense it's coming in as, as UDP. So I'm gonna, I know I need to come in UDP. If I configure it as TCP, it won't work. If it's UDP, if it's TCP, and I configure it as UDP, it will not work. You've got to set it up on the right protocol. And so the right, and so anyway, I'm gonna go to UDP. I could have hit the add new, but I'm going to see all the listing. I'm listening to no UDP ports. I'm going to add a new local UDP port. What port did I set it open to listen on? 5514. Okay. So I'm going to come here. 5514. That's the port. Make sure this is clicked as T, uh, you can flip back and forth. I want it on UDP. I'm not going to do a source name override. I'm not going to set up only accept connections from. There's reasons to do that for this sake. That's beyond the scope here. Let's just get the logs in. I'm going to go to my input settings. I need a source type. Remember, well, what's the source type? Worst situation here is under this PFSense, maybe I have a source type for system events. Maybe I have a source type for firewall events. But they're all coming together as one syslog. So unfortunately, even if I had a source type for one of those logs, I don't have a source type for all of them. There is no, hey, all different types, you're just going to parse it out. No, it's going to, everything that comes in on this port that it's listening to will be assigned a source type. And that's not good. You don't want multiple, multiple logs coming in under the same source type when they're actually different logs. Um, there are places where it can work for you, but as a general rule, not a good idea. So I'm just going to write um, pfSense um, syslog. I'm just going to make my own source type up. I'm not going to leave a description there. I'm going to put it in the search and reporting app. Search and reporting. Maybe I'll find search and reporting someday. I'll get too many apps and then you can't find anything. Where are you search? It's usually right at the top. Blind is a bad. There it is, search and reporting. Uh, you should put it in a better app than this, but I'm going to get rid of it because I don't like syslog coming in this way. Do I want, now I'm going to choose the host. Is Am I going to do it based off IP, DNS, custom? I'll save it as host. Cool. What index do I want to send it in? Let's send it to, the, to a, a test index, which I've set up. I could create a new index, put it to whatever. And now I'm going to hit review. It's going to tell me, all right, you're going to be listening on the UDP port for 5514. You're not overriding the host or the source. Source type will now go in as PF syslog. It, this, all, these, all these config changes will be located in the search app, and the host name will come from the DNS entry of the remote server, and the index is test. Sweet. We'll hit submit. We're all good to go. I get it start searching here. I'm just going to jump over here just to index equals test. And I got logs coming in. Now, uh, the older logs are actually just so you're aware. It was testing, so I made sure it would work. They're the same source type. Whatever source type I add here. So if I start searching, it'll, did I use capital or lowercase? Gotta love when you, so I have a 
the lowercase pf sense is the ones I just sent in. So let's go ahead and put that source type in there. Source type equals pf sense syslog. And let's turn it on head 100. And we're going to go to verbose. Let's see if we can see that these logs might be slightly different, but they're all listed under the same source type. Okay, so this is a pfSense ARPA filter log. These all look to be about the same log. All the same log. Let's go does not equal filter log. Let's see if we can get that. Who knows? Hmm. Well, these are all firewalls. If I get something else in there, it would help. But the basically, I'm hoping you get the concept, even if it's not showing it right now. I'm going to get every one of those every one of those logs are all going to get thrown into the exact same family and that's going to be frustrating and then I'm going to have to find a way to get them separated etc and that's not the the ideal method so let's show what I have actually done I am going to let's open up a brand new window here All right, if I go to the shell here, I am now on my PFSense box. I have actually loaded a, P I have a Splunk forwarder, and I actually have an app called TA PFSense, which I have built. And if we go into TA PFSense, we can see that I have a default and a local. Let's go see what's in the default. I have an inputs.conf. So if I read the inputs.conf, I am actually, I know where these logs are located. The logs for my DHCPD are in the dot log location. DHCP, they're in var log there, var log off. And so I actually put a monitoring stanza and this is gonna read the actual log. And it's gonna go grab, hey, all the auth logs, you are going to get tagged with the source type pfSense auth, index pfSense. This one is going to be pfSense DHCPD. Instead of the old, the syslog, which puts them all together, clumps them all together, y'all, uh, all the different logs are now stuck with the same source type. I have now spread, them, broken them apart, so they're different uh, source types. I hope that makes sense. I know there's some more. I must be in the local. Yep, in the local, I have the auth DHCP. Here's my PF blocker uh, RNG and that filter log, that very same one I'm seeing here, I've got it monitored using just looking for filter.log and it's in the var log location. So I'm pulling the, I am doing a monitor stanza and you point it to its path, declare the source type, index, disabled, whatever, disabled be on or off, do I want to monitor for it? And I'm pulling the logs this way. That way each log from my remote system gets its own source type, I can put it in its own index, and the beauty is then I can actually parse the logs nice and easy. Let's go and look. If I go Vi props, this will actually tell me, I can actually set up my, uh, my parsing on there where it line breaks, um, any sort of rules I need to put in to uh, split this thing apart. So I, I control with, if I use Splunk, I can control how the logs go in, how they're source typed, how they're parsed, et cetera. If I use syslog, I can't. Now there is a way that you can make sys, I don't want to just poo poo on syslog. If you can get one log sent, you can go put, for example, send it to port 5514. That would be my auth log, send them to 5514. And if you can get your syslogs, the machine to syslog, the filter logs out to 5515, and the auth logs to 5516, and the block PNG to 5517. So each, uh, you have many, many syslogs coming in 
then you could manage to do that. But here's another thing. Remember that if you reset Splunk, all of a sudden you'll stop listening on that syslog, on that syslog port. And especially if it's UDP, those logs are all gone. Um, if it's TCP, t typically it'll start to, it'll say, okay, I didn't send, I'll resend when Splunk comes back up. But you've got a system that does reboot. Uh, so if you want to use syslog, my recommendation is forge your syslog to a syslog server, not, not Splunk, and have that syslog server write each of those logs coming in to a different file folder, and then write a Splunk app that monitors, again, we'll go vi inputs.com monitors those specific logs and sends them in. They'll come in TCP, meaning they're, if the any server systems go down, it'll wait and resend so you won't lose data. You can have each one in its own source type, thereby you can have its own filtering, uh, its own breaking apart of the fields, extraction, ex et cetera. It's a much better solution. Uh, you can use syslog. Splunk itself does not recommend turning Splunk into a syslog server. It can, but it's not a good it's not a good suggestion. Uh, sometimes it's the only way you've got until you can figure out how to get the logs from their original source. But if you can avoid having uh, uh, using syslog and sending it straight to Splunk, that's best. The UFs are meant to monitor folders, files, scripts, etc., and don't and use that and have syslog write to files. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. I hope that moves, helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk ninja. Keep following the videos as we continue to show how we can uh, improve the use of universal forwarders. Got any questions, comments, uh, please comment down below and hope you keep coming back.